Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Alan's Cloud. Uh, my name is Alan Samsel, and uh, today I'm going to do a quick video about Portainer. Um, in past videos, I've talked about Portainer and its usefulness when using Docker to, you know, kind of have just a, a, a GUI interface to be able to point and click, start and stop containers, and things like that. So uh, it does have its advantages, um, especially if you're only using a few containers here and there. I don't know if it's the best solution for orchestration. Uh, you know, I've never actually used. Um, you know Kubernetes or, or any of those other type of uh, orchestration software but um, you know this is definitely better than working at the command line uh, if you're unfamiliar with it or if you're just lazy like me um, so uh, this video today we're going to talk about uh, how to actually upgrade Portainer itself because that's a question I've seen more than once and uh, hopefully this video will help somebody so if uh, you need that type of information or you're interested stick around so again, we're talking about Portainer today. So Portainer is a piece of software. It's actually a Docker container itself that you first start up and run inside of the Docker command line. Uh, and then once you've done that, you actually get a very nice, clean graphical user interface where you can interact with containers. You can start and stop them as you need. You can see which volumes they're using. You can actually start them from inside of Portainer as well. But there are some, some quirks to doing that, and I actually prefer starting up my Docker containers from the command line rather than inside of Portainer. But you can do it. Um, there are other features in there, uh, like Docker Compose. It is built in, but it's an earlier version at the moment, uh, so it, it does have a little bit of, of, of um, you know, they need some updating. And Portainer is a very useful program for what it is. But uh, one of the main questions that uh, I have seen on forums is people just don't understand, you know, once it's up and running, it's great. They've got the website, they can get to Portainer, but they don't know how to update Portainer itself. And um, I'm not going to step you through it, but I am going to, you know, show you a couple of pages here. So this is the Docker Hub website with the Portainer slash Portainer image that's being hosted there. Um, the, you know, the the very simple command to pull that image at the command line inside of Docker is is what you see. Well, right here, uh, Docker pull can uh, pull Portainer slash Portainer. Right, dead easy. That gets the image down to the computer, and then, uh, you know, from there you can actually start up the Portainer container. The instructions to do that um, are kind of hidden because you actually have to come down here and, and click on Deploy Portainer, uh, and I actually have that open here already. And uh, this section right here, this quick start, is pretty much all you're going to do. This uh, creates a volume for it, this first line here, volume create Portainer underscore data. And then, um, you know, this this command here, docker run uh, tac d, and then tac p for the port 9000, 9000, uh, tac p 8000, 8000. You know, one is the internal for the docker container, one is the external for, um, you know, your virtual machine or wherever docker is running. One is, you know, what you will actually connect to, and, and one is just in, internal to docker. And then you actually give it a name, portainer. Uh, restart uh, command here is always then you've got this first volume right here the tac v this is what actually allows docker to be uh, the the pertainer to pretty much command docker locally um, there are ways of doing that uh, over the network and things like that but we actually we're going to connect through this uh, sock connection here uh, and then this last one here is uh, the volume is is where your data actually is is contained. So portainer underscore data is that volume you just created in the command one above, and then uh, it actually mounts it inside of the container at slash data. Uh, and then portainer slash portainer is of course the image that you're going to use, and you have already pulled that down, or even if you skip that step and and you just run this command. If it doesn't find it locally, it will go out and, and pull that from, from the Docker registry. So that's basically how you set up Portainer. And once it's there, it's actually up and running on, you know, whatever the uh, IP address is of the virtual machine, or in my case, it's an LXC, and then that 9000 port. So as you can see, I've, I've got it up here and running. Um, one of the initial steps of, of turning it on, you're going to have to select that whole uh, local 
um, option for the Docker sock, but uh, maybe it'll have it do it uh, in, in this once we've actually upgraded it. But as you can see here, I'm running uh, 1.22.1 uh, It says there's a new version available, right? Uh, and you can see right here in this announcement that it's 122.2. Now, you know, there might be some security updates in there that you would want. And so uh, going out and getting this, you know, isn't, uh, you know, awful. Uh, it just there's more steps because you can't actually do it from here inside of Portainer. It, it's kind of counterintuitive, but since Portainer is actually a running container, um, you know, you, you can't update it like that. So as you can see, Portainer 1222, or 122, uh, is the name of this container and that becomes important here in, in one of the next steps um, and it says that it's the latest or it was the latest that was used at the time but you can see when this was created this was back in in uh, mid-october and if there's any questions on that you can actually look at your images down here uh, in this tab and you can see here that my portainer well I'm in the way but right there um, 10 October was was when that was created so one of the things you can do before you even get to the command line is you can actually come up here to image and you can put portainer slash portainer and it says right here if you don't specify anything the latest will be used and it's gonna go to docker hub and it's gonna pull that one for you and and basically refresh it on your system so you should have two in a second when this is done that'll pop up here right so now the one that's actually running is called portainer slash portainer and then it's none and um, the one here that says unused is portainer slash portainer colon latest right so that's a good thing so pretty much now we have that very latest uh, 1.22.2 version which is is what this is already locally established on the machine so that when we switch over here and I've got a um, uh, inside of my Proxmox uh, system here, I've got a console window already up, and uh, let's see about bringing that up. There we go, and we'll zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, so now that we're at the console, we're going to go ahead and upgrade Portainer to this latest version that we had just downloaded uh, through that pull process inside of the Portainer uh, GUI. So, um, you know, one of the nice things about doing this portainer, uh, it doesn't affect Docker and it doesn't affect any of your other running containers when you do this upgrade. So what we have to do first is we have to actually um, kill the running Docker container. So we're going to actually stop the, the one that's running right now by running the command Docker and then stop and then portainer and then the name of it. Uh, well, so portainer122 is the name of it in my case, and then hit enter. So the response there, you see portainer122. That tells me that I have just stopped uh, the running container of portainer, right? So we're, the next command is going to actually delete it. Docker rm for remove, and then same thing, the name of it, portainer122. Okay, so you see the response there, pertainer122, that tells me that it's now been deleted. So if I were to actually run the list of my Docker images, so I think that's Docker image ls, you can see here that we have still two portainers. Uh, that first one is uh, latest, is the tag for it, and then I have another one with, which is uh, portainer, uh, portainer slash portainer with none. doesn't have a tag. So, and we'll come around and we'll delete that one later on. So, what we need to run is the command that is back on the Quick Start uh, Portainer website, right? Uh, let me go back to the desktop here. So, this was the website that I'm talking about. And then we don't have to do this first step because you should have already done it when you first created your uh, Portainer instance, the one that was there before. In my case, um, I, I named it a little uh, differently. So, I'm going to change uh, something here uh, at the end of the second line, which this is what we need to run again. Uh, to basically start up the newer instance of Portainer. So uh, I'm not going to copy and paste that. You can, but just be aware that if you copy and paste it, it will execute immediately, or at least it does in this uh, Proxmox console window. And I don't want to do that. So there's a couple of things that I want to change. So 
I'm going to go back to the console here and I'm just going to type it in. So we're going to do Docker and then run tack D and then tack P 9000. Colon 9000 for that port. Another port here. And again, those are an internal to Docker and then a, an external one. The first one is the external one. That's that's uh, basically uh, goes along with the IP address of whatever virtual machine or LXC that you're running this from. That's how you're, you uh, get to the website that, that Portainer is running on. So this next part here, we're going to give it a name. And this time, instead of Portainer122, I'm going to call this 122 two because this is uh, 1.22.2 this time um, let's see here we're gonna give it our restart command which is always and then we're gonna do the first volume here which is basically again the connection so that the retainer um, interface here the website uh, that you're setting up this container can actually run docker for you locally uh, let's see your docker sock and then var run docker dot sock then let's see here then we go to our actual um, let's see here the volume and in your case you can leave it default if that's what you used before uh, in my case uh, I have it named portainer and then slash data well, I think there's no space there data and then portainer slash portainer is the uh, image that we downloaded earlier it, because we're not actually and we can call this latest if we want IT latest and then when I hit enter here okay I see what I did there there is a space right here between that colon and this forward slash and that can't be there oops well, let's go back okay that looks good now we just have to hit run okay uh, and so that whole string of numbers there means that it actually set up and is working correctly um, so we can do uh, let's see here docker uh, container and then ls and let's see here it looks like we have portainer 1222 up and running so let's try to go to the desktop here and we'll go to the portainer site and we'll hit refresh and we will try to log in here okay and uh, as you can see we are on one two 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 um, we are still connected and all of my other containers, uh, Ubiquity and Heimdall, which is my you know home page that I run, uh, and Tautuli are all up and running as they were before. No impacts to them. And um, yeah, it saved all of my settings and uh, we're good to go. So, you know, Pertainer is very useful, but uh, you know, you can't update it from within inside of Pertainer itself. So, um, that's the way you go about doing it in at the console uh, I know I had a couple of rough patches there but bear with me it, it, it does work um, and you may when you first set it up sometimes I've had it where because of the cache settings inside of the web browser um, you know I use Firefox daily so I've actually had to open up Chrome and go to the address um, you know and, and try to set up the password again if it loses some of the config settings or if I if I do it wrong but uh, it looks like everything's saved so um, if you all have any questions, uh, please, you know, give me comments and um, like and subscribe. I'm still trying to build up my subscriber base, as I tell you every time. 
and uh, all of these other social media uh, outlets right here feel free to reach out and contact me through those if you like um, I try to get to those as often as possible but you know again please like and subscribe and have a good one